What's up you guys, Josh here, also known as Harry Tornado, and I'm coming at you today with another DIY video where I take an item I got at Goodwill and we fix it up, refurbish it, and hopefully flip it for some major profits. And what is this mystery item of the day? Bam! Wall shelf. I picked up this wall shelf at Goodwill a couple weeks ago. I paid $7.97 for it. It looks pretty cool. At first glance, you may think there's nothing wrong with it. Like, Josh, what are we going to do to this wall shelf? What kind of refurbishing are we going to do? Well, I'll tell you the secret of the industry, the wood, wood woodworking industry. Wood that comes on these store-bought things. I mean, it's got one of these tags on it, so I'm assuming somebody bought it at Hobby Lobby or some major home goods store or something like that. But the wood they make this stuff out of is not very good. It's, it's grown very quickly, so it doesn't have a lot of strength. I mean, it feels like I could easily crack this thing over my knee and break it in half. So the refurbishing that we're gonna do to this piece is I'm basically gonna take all the hardware off, we're gonna save all the hooks and the wall hooks on the back, and we're just gonna make a new piece of wood to put this on. It's, it sounds easy because it is easy. The amount of skills and tools you'll need are very, very limited. Anybody can do this. It's really customizable. You can make the shelf as long or as short as you want with as many hooks as you want. Uh, so I'm very excited to share this with you guys today. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel for more content like this. So with that being said, let's just jump into it and get to making our very own wall shelf. Well, kind of, kind of make, refurbishing our very own wall shelf. Okay, so the first step is gonna be the easiest. We've got to remove all the hooks. Uh, these hooks have four screws in each one, and the who's, who's, the hooks in the back have two screws. Uh, it looks like they're all Phillips head, so I'm just gonna use my drill and get these unscrewed. Uh, the, the biggest tip I can give in this situation is just when you're taking the screws out, make sure you keep up with them because you're gonna need to reuse them later on. And I just want to mention again, based off my experience, I would really go ahead and get a Ziploc bag and put all the screws in. These screws are very, very easy to lose. And if you lose one, you'll have to replace it. And then it's really hard finding a replacement that matches. So just go ahead and get a Ziploc bag and put all them, put all the screws in just and set them aside so you have them later on. So the next step in this process is choosing your wood. Now, for most people, I think you'd be fine with just going to Lowe's or Home Depot and finding a really nice straight piece of, of pine. Uh, if you want to be a little bit fancier, maybe you could go with oak. Uh, but pine will be the most affordable. It's still gonna be better than that cardboard stuff that originally came with the shelf. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna take you straight into Lowe's. I'm just gonna go in and I'll show you exactly what to look for picking out the right wood for this wall shelf. So when you're picking out this wood, you wanna look for two things. One, you wanna make sure your piece that you have is gonna be straight. And two, you wanna make sure that there are no knots. Or you can have some knots, because when you're dealing with pine, you're gonna have knots. So this piece, if you look at it, Can you see the curl in that little curve where it goes that way? So that piece is not, I don't know if you can see or not. Anyway, this one's dead straight, straight as an arrow. I don't know if you can see it. You kind of look down at like a, like a rifle scope. Uh, it's really straight, but it's got a couple of these knots here and there. You can't, you won't be able to screw the screws into the knots um, and it just makes the wood a little bit more Fragile, breakable. This piece is the best piece I found. It does have one little spot right here, which is a bigger knot on the back, uh, but we'll just make this the back and it should be good to go. There's no other major knots. And it's pretty straight. So this is gonna be our piece. This is a section in the back of Lowe's where uh, wood cutting section where they would cut the wood for you. Uh, unfortunately, I don't see anyone working here, so. I have a saw, I'm just gonna take this wood home and cut it myself, but uh, I'm sure if you yell loud enough, someone will come help you. I didn't mention this in the store, but the piece of wood I got, this is a one by six by eight. Uh, I believe it was like $11.75 in the store. Um, I think this is a good piece, a good measurement for your shelf. Uh, the one, it's like, it's supposed to be an inch thick, six inches wide and eight feet 
long. Plays and loads, you can have it cut down. Um, that's when you kind of customize it and make it your own length, whatever length you want. Uh, I've got my saw here, so I'm going to go ahead and cut this down probably, I'd say about just over halfway. So maybe like four and a half feet long, um, just to give myself a really long shelf to work with and, and to cut off some of this little bad spot right there. Now we're left with this shelf. Uh, again, it's roughly, roughly four feet long. You can make it however length you want, um, but I went with this length. So now I'm going to go with like a kind of a rustic feel for this shelf because I think these, uh, these hooks are really kind of rustic is we're going to work on distressing the wood a little bit. You can take a hammer or a screwdriver, any, really anything, and we're just going to attack the wood, ding it up, put some scratches and dents in there, uh, be as creative as you want. And then we're going to go in with a sander afterwards, sand it down, kind of smooth them over so it looks more, so the wounds and the wood don't look so fresh. You want it to look kind of old and dinged up, not fresh and dinged up. So now that we got it nice and distressed, or however, whatever you want, whatever you want to call it, uh, the wounds are some of them are a little deep. These holes are a little deep. So we're going to go in with the sander. Uh, this is a random orbital sander and the sandpaper. I believe this is 120 grit uh, sandpaper, and we're just going to go over the wounds and just smooth them over, and just kind of make them look a little older. Haley's home. Say hey, Haley. So anyway, I just finished sanding this wood. Uh, you can tell how the the holes are now like really nice and kind of smoothed out. It looks like they've got some age to them. I also went ahead and sanded the outside edges of the wood uh, and the the corners of the wood. You just want to kind of knock those down with the sander just so they're not super sharp. Uh, it just really gives the wood an older feel. Obviously, it doesn't look old now because it's still unstained uh, but once you get some stain on this and distress it a little bit more it's gonna look really really good um, so now I'm just gonna wipe it off with a wet paper towel just to remove some of the excess um, sawdust and then once it's dry from the water in the rag we're gonna go in and start staining it So for most of my projects where I use any kind of stain, I use Minwax uh, Espresso. This shelf, I think we want to make it look really rustic and really you know, kind of like old barn wood. Uh, so I think it'll look really good if we just stain it full espresso, full, full on dark espresso, uh, and then see what it looks like. So the, the board is, is stained. I stained the front, the back, and the sides. It just kind of looks old and ragged, and, and I, re I really, really like how it turned out. This is going to take probably, I'd say, at least an hour and a half, maybe two hours before it's dry enough to, to work with without getting more stain on your hands. So while that's drying, I'm going to go inside and get hydrated. So I've given the shelf about an hour and a half to dry and I came in here and checked it and it's it's fine It's ready to go. So our next step is going to be taking the hooks and kind of positioning them on the shelf uh, To find out where we want to screw them down. This is probably the most difficult part of, of the whole shelf Refurbishing is, is putting the hooks back on to where they're even and they look nice I think the easiest way to do this is to have a tape measure and measure the entire length of the board and find like a center point. So this board is just over 39 inches long. 
So our midpoint is going to be just under 20 inches right here. So if we take the first hook and put it right about the right about the 20 inch mark, that should be the middle. And then we'll take a pencil and mark where the holes are for this first hook. I guess you can kind of see where the pencil marks were there and right there. So with five, uh, this trick only works with five hooks, I should say. So you put the, the first hook in the middle and get that like centered, you know, vertically and horizontally. And then with the other, the, the second and third hooks, you're going to center them vertically. And just like you can kind of measure on the side. I just like to measure on the side how far they are from the edge. So this one is just over two inches from the edge. And then they get the tape measure again, just over two inches from the edge, and just over two inches. So now that we have three hooks, this one's centered on the board, and these two are equal distances from the edges, we can go in and eyeball the other two and kind of just put them in the middle of each hook. And again, this only works with five hooks or an odd number of hooks. If you want to use six hooks or an even number of hooks, um, you'd have to do a little bit more measuring. So if you just eyeball that, it looks pretty decent. It doesn't have to be perfect. You just want to make sure that they're relatively straight, not too obviously crooked. But it's your shelf. If you want to make it with crooked hooks, you, you do you. But since I'm planning on selling this, uh, I'm going to make sure it's nice and straight and even, and the hooks are really just installed correctly. So now that I've got the hooks kind of set in place where I think they should go, I'm just going to take another look at it, make sure it's what I want, and then I'm going to go in with the pencil again and mark the holes for the other hooks. So you can see I got the holes marked for all the shelves right there. Kind of hard to see, but I've got them all marked ready to go. I'm going to get my drill and kind of pre-drill the holes a little bit just to make the screws go in a little bit easier. Another tip to verify that the hooks are all level is you can kind of look down it, like just like we were at Lowe's looking down the edge of the wood to verify that it was straight. You can look down the hooks this way and just make sure that they look even looking down the board. Nobody's going to be critiquing your wall shelf this much once it's installed and up on the wall and it's got coats on it. Uh, but it's just important. When you're doing stuff, it's important to take some time and do it right, especially if you're going to sell this stuff later. So now that we got our holes drilled, our next step is just going to be putting the hooks back over the holes and then using the original screws that I told you to keep in the Ziploc bag, we're gonna use those to secure the hooks to the new wood. So here's what it looks like with all the hooks on it. I think it turned out pretty cool. The only thing left to do now is to take the small hooks uh, that hang it on the wall and install them on the back. Now the only tip I have for this step is to make sure that you put the hooks on the top of the wall shelf. You, you want to make sure you have the orientation right. So if the, the hooks are facing this way, you want to make sure you put the hook, the, the wall hooks on the top shelf. You don't want to, you don't want to end up putting the hooks down here and then having your shelf upside down. And just like that, the hooks are on the back. It's good to go. And we have a fully functional, ooh, ooh, let me drop it. And we have a fully functional wall shelf. I'm gonna go install this on one of our walls in the house. I'll stage it and put some coats on it or something like that. Just to give you a quick synopsis of, of the whole project and my costs and potential profits. Again, I spent just under $8 for the shelf at Goodwill. The wood we picked up at Lowe's was about another $12 or so, bringing my total cost to just under $20 for this project. I'm not including the cost of the stain or the sander or any of that because I already had those items. And if you want to get into furniture flipping or any kind of simple woodworking, you're going to need to pick up those items because I use them in pretty much every single project I do. And also, if you don't want to do DIY projects, you only want to buy and sell items, you should still be on the lookout for these wall shelves. If you found a wall shelf similar to this one, you could just remove the hooks from the front and back, bundle them together, and sell just the hooks on eBay for probably $20 to $25 with shipping on top. Now, as far as asking price for the shelf, 
I'm probably gonna list it locally for about $80. I might do an Etsy listing for maybe $149 just to see what happens. I've never actually sold anything on Etsy, but uh, for what I can see, the, the wall shelves and the items on Etsy that are similar to the shelf I made are pretty high priced, anywhere from $150 to $200. So I might just put a listing up there and just see what happens. So this is the wood that originally came with the shelf. And here is the shelf we made. You can see, with, when comparing the two, you can see just how much larger the new one is. Much more difficult to ship, but much more profit to be made. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you have any questions or comments or anything like that, drop them down below. I'll be happy to, to answer any of them for you. If you like the video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. It helps me out a ton reaching a larger audience. And if you haven't already, consider subscribing to my channel. I post at least two videos a week, either about reselling or eBay or flipping furniture, just ways to make money in your spare time. If you think that's cool, subscribe to the channel and we can be best friends. Maybe, maybe we'll be best friends. You never know. You got the first step in any friendship is subscribing to their YouTube channel. And that is, that's a fact. Can't argue with facts.